healthy. At the end of the last video, we showed you the analytical solution to describe the intensity of the diffracted beam. The intensity of the diffracted beam under the two beam condition is a function of T, C, and S effective. In this video, we'll walk you through the physical meanings of these parameters. Let's look at each parameter. So T is the sample thickness. C is called the extinction distance. You will see why it is called extinction distance pretty soon. And Cg can be mathematically expressed as pi v cos theta b divided by lambda fg. V is the volume of the unit cell. So u dot c dot is unit cell. Theta b is the Bragg's condition angle or Bragg's angle. Lambda is the wavelength of the electron beam. You know that if you know the acceleration voltage and Fg is called structure factor. We will discuss more about the structure factor in the future videos. Let's just take a minute and try to understand this equation here. So what this equation tells us is the extinction distance for the selected reflection G depends on the volume of the unit cell of the crystal V, the angle of the Bragg reflection theta B, the wavelength of the electron beam lambda, and the structure factor Fg for the selected reflection G. For a given material, and if we examine the given material in a regular TEM, we know the volume of the unit cell, we know the structure factor of the given material, we also know the wavelength of the electron beam from the TEM. So Cg now is only a function of theta b, the Bragg's angle. What this tells you is that the value of the extinction distance depends on which spot you choose to form the two-beam condition. For example, Cc100 will not be equal to Cc111, even in the same material. The last parameter we haven't discussed in the intensity equation is S effective. So this is the effective excitation error. I hope the term of excitation error is not a stranger to you. In the last video we talked about in TEM, due to the thin film effect, the diffraction spots are getting stretched and they form the red rods. If the evil sphere does not cut through, the center of the red rods will have the excitation error. This is the equation to describe the effective excitation error. The effective excitation error is a function of excitation error and see the extinction distance. There are a few notes about the effective excitation error. First of all, it is never equal to zero. Secondly, if the excitation error is equal to zero, then the effective excitation error is equal to C g. to the power of minus one. If uh, the excitation error is very large, then the S effective is equal to S. Assuming the sample is super, super flat and uh, the evil sphere is cutting through the center of the red rods and there's no bending, then S is equal to 
zero, so there's no excitation error. And if we substitute this value into this equation, what we're going to have is SF to be written as 1 over CG. In this case, the term here is exactly the same as the term down here in the denominator. So they can simply cancel out. We can thus simplify the equation as sine square pi t over c g. Let's rewrite the simplified intensity equation on a separate page. So ig is equal to sine square pi t over c g. What this tells us is that the intensity of the diffracted beam is a sine square function of the sample thickness. As we have mentioned before, this is a two beam condition. So the total beam intensity, I total, is equal to I naught plus I G. And we can denote I total as one. If we want to plot the transmitted beam intensity, all we have to do is to plot 1 minus Ig. In the next video, we'll show you the plots of Ig and I0 as a function of t. We will also discuss the implication of this equation on the contrast we see in TEM.